Hi folks, welcome back. This is a kind of part two of the uh, fixing the leather belt. Uh, before I made a belt, used a glue that was recommended to me by the leather shop. And a lot of people commented and said, that isn't going to work. And boy, were they right. So this stuff, uh, Tanner's Bond Contact Cement, makes a good bond, but it doesn't stand up to heat. So, one of the anonymous uh, commenters, and please leave your comments up. I don't care. I'll read them. Not going to hurt my feelings. If you do, I'll sick Don on you. <laughs> Boy, you'll be sorry. Anyway, he suggested two different other glues. And uh, I went to Ace Hardware to get the one that he said, and uh, they had a weld wood instead of a weld on. And I don't know if it's the same or he made a mistake or what, but uh, I've got a little can of it that we may or may not try. The second glue he recommended was barge glue, the original. And he said to get some thinner because I might have to thin it down. Well, that was going to be about 50 bucks and about four days away. So uh, while I was at the Ace Hardware, beside the weld on was this little bottle of glue that's called Pillow Bond, P L I O B O N D 25 L V. And it is a special purpose contact adhesive. It says it's rubber, leather, canvas, steel, fiberglass, everything. Permanent flexible bond. Withstands vibration, flexing, and stretching. And it remains, uh, remains flexible and tough from below zero to 200 degrees Fahrenheit. So, I bought it. I've got it here, and I'm going to try it. And if this fails, we'll go get the barge. Heck, we might find a glue that works good. Who knows? Now, in the last video, I showed you my little board I made using some uh, uh, carpenter shims, is what I call them. You buy these. These are composite. We used to use, you know, shingles. But then shingles got to be expensive, so. Anyway, these are a hard thermoplastic and it worked pretty good for getting me that angle I wanted to make a nice taper. You can't stitch these things guys. You can't put a little groove in it. Anything that goes over that pulley on the spindle is going to impart vibration to your surface finish. So I can't use the, the fingers or anything like that. In my mind the only proper way to do this is to put a spliced belt together. And that's what I'm going to do. Now, as you can see, my my planer bed's getting clean. Don's been nagging me day and night. I got, I've got two projects left to do. This one I'm going to get to this afternoon. This is the uh, dogs that are messed up on the uh, Toolmaster mill. I gotta get the Toolmaster out of my way. I got other machines coming in. I'm gonna be selling the Toolmaster and I've decided I'm gonna sell the uh, uh, 50 pound little giant hammer. I've always wanted a hammer but I've had a problem with my hands over the years and they're getting worse and worse and worse. And my wife sat there and says, after I bought a hammer, she says, so you're going to be a blacksmith now. And I said, well, no, but I figure I beat on the metal. She says, how are you going to do that with your hands? I forgot all about my hands being kind of messed up. They cut me in 11 places on this one. And frankly, if I swing a hammer too much, I am going to hurt them. So, sadly, my blacksmithing days stopped before they even got started. So, if anybody wants a nice little hammer, I don't see any cracks or anything on it. It needs going over. It needs a motor. It doesn't have one, but that's good. You can put any one-horse motor you want on it. It's got the bracket for it. Uh, I've seen a lot of hammers around, and this one's probably in the best shape. So... 
I'm going to let it go for $3,800. Really hate that, but that's what I'm going to do. And as soon as I get the Toolmaster finished, we'll be selling it too. But I want to make sure it's all working well before it goes out of here. Uh, so, I've got to TIG up these little uh, tips on this gear and then regrind them. And I've been laying awake at night wondering how in the heck I'm going to do it. I bought some AT, A2 tool hardening TIG rod. And it's in. And I've just been trying to get the courage up to do this. So maybe later on tonight I'll do that. I went and got me a couple blocks of stuff to try here for practice. Because I sure don't want to have to start making that again. I can. But why? So I take a file and go over this, and it's hard. So I've got a little piece of steel I had. That's much softer. So then I thought, well, why don't I just get a piece of uh, uh, tool bit material and see what it does. That's about as hard as that is. So. What I'm going to do is I'm going to practice my ticking on the edge of this to see if I can not make a mess out of it and get my settings down right. Well, that's what we're going to do. That's the last thing I have to do for the Toolmaster. Once I get this uh, joint uh, done here, we'll go on to that. Now, my anonymous commenter that apparently has had 17 years experience in making these kind of belt joints. Uh, in addition to telling me about the, the, the glue, told me about a technique that they use to make the splice. And I personally think that if I did that every day for years, I could do it too. But in the spirit of trying new things, I'm going to try it. Now, one thing he said, uh, wasn't quite true. He says, any true Texan has a fillet knife. Well, it got so expensive to go offshore fishing, and that's the only kind I really like. I haven't been fishing in years. But, I don't have any fillet knives either. But, any true Texan has the handyman's helper. So, I'm going to make me a down and dirty fillet knife. What was it? If the women don't find you handsome, they ought to find you handy. <laughs> anyway, I have a razor sharp razor blade. That's about seven inches long. I have a piece of tooth guard off of a saw blade. And I'm going to put that together. I have an old grinder handle. I have some duct tape. What the hell could go wrong? <laughs> now, he told me that they used a specific motion to make this work. You get a hard metal table and use a down uh, a left to right slicing motion if I remember right let's just hope that isn't a left to right slicing motion on my hand I'm gonna <laughs> I subscribe to the notion you don't bring a knife to a gunfight. That's why I don't have knives. And I don't know what happened, but I had one subscriber. Now, I don't badger you guys to subscribe. I figure you're grown people. You know how to do it if you want to. If you don't, it's okay. It's kind of fun for me to watch the numbers. But... So boy sent me a thing said, I cannot stand your gun culture. I'm unsubscribing. Uh, 
I didn't do it. <laughs> okay. Let's go get a piece of leather. Oh. Well, I have a piece of leather. I was just beating Don with it the other day. I know it's here somewhere. Well, there it is. Don tried to hide it. All right. Now there's a joint that I made using this board. So I'm going to try to make one the way he said. I forgot whether he said put the skin side down or up. So I guess that's a pretty good fillet knife. We'll try it both ways. Guess you guys could see it better if I moved you in a little. Okay. He said put it down on a hard metal table. This is the hardest metal table I have. Start about six inches back from the end, which is about right here. And as I kind of read it, it was to do a drawing motion like this down the edge. So here we go. Well, it may be 10 years when I learn how to, you know, this is probably like an art. And frankly, I don't have time to learn that art. So here's what I'm going to do. first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go make this a little bit tighter down here by tapering it on the belt sander. I'll be right back. What I need to do is put some sticky tape back down to hold the belt. So that gorilla tape. Gorilla mounting tape. Now this belt isn't very thick, you know, it's just pretty thin. Go see if we can make this. Cut it off on the grinder.
That is a 60 grit. Or if I could touch it up by hand. That out of the way so it doesn't grab me around the neck. That, I think I can make work. Get it to the rough angle on there, and it made a nice little taper. Let's see if you can see that. Well, let's go do the real belt, and we'll bring it out here and we'll touch it up on the grinder or sander. Keep this in case Don gets out of hand. Now this is the belt that failed. It's been hanging ever since I did that test and it's pretty strong but I ripped the leather apart. Let's get rid of this and see if we can do a better one. think I'm going to do is get rid of my Texas knife and go back to this leather made for leather tool get that down to where I can use it Touch that up on a sander and I think we will be good. Now, this needs to go like that. So this side's the one it needs to be. Now that I was doing this again, this is down and dirty. If I was making something to, to make this happen all the time, I'd make these out of steel. Okay, I think I'll go touch these up and I'll be back. Now this stuff says it'll cause cancer and everything else. Don't know what to use. They 
Directions for use. Circus, uh, thin you kind of show. Okay, this is different. Add a thin uniform coat to each surface. Permit both to dry completely. If one surface is extremely porous, which both of these are, apply a second coat and permit to dry. When ready to assemble, apply an additional coat to one surface. When tacky, push firm, firmly together. Use pressure if possible during final bonding. Total cure strength develops in seven days, but it can be handled immediately. I looked at this stuff because, you know, during COVID, things kind of sit around on store shelves and something like this might have been there forever, but it had a manufacture date or what I assume to be of 92120. So it's not 30 years old. Let's see what it looks like. It's yellow. Thick and yellow. All right, here we go. A thin coat. Too dry. Now that my blacksmithing greens have been squashed, I'm going on to another one. <laughs> I've been telling you guys, now's the time to buy machines. I know I'll never see another time like this. Okay. There's a thin coat. On both of them. Now that my blacksmithing career has been dashed, I've decided to put the space to good use and bought a 17 ton, four foot press brake, which you probably saw in one of the videos down in South Houston and as soon as this little tropical storm gets out of the way I'm going to take the trailer and you can guys can go with me and we will go pick it up. Well that's not tacky anymore. Feels dry enough to put another coat on. It's two thin coats. What do you all want to do now? Guess I could talk about this some more. I'm really worried about screwing this up more than it is. So my plan, I've already cleaned all the paint and everything off this with acetone, is I bought some A2 filler rod for TIG. It's a hardened steel rod. And I'm just going to try to make a little tack right there and build this edge up. And then put it on the surface grinder and grind this part flat again. And then take a little uh, die grinder and go in and try to shape that wall. Now this wall, I don't know if you can see it or not. Maybe you can see it better on this part. 
the wall of this dog is not 90 degrees off this surface. It's tapered. And so when this goes in, it, it goes in and then locks up as, as it goes down. Well, these little tips have rounded off on it. You see how they're pristine back in the back. That'll give me a good guide to grind to. So, they want to put this back together without fixing it. I'll use this piece of uh, tool steel to practice that edge and see if I can get the, the TIG settings down. Okay, it's been maybe 15, 20 minutes. It feels nice and dry. Instructions say to apply one coat to one side. And this is the lucky side. That's tacky. Okay, got my mark here. Pressure. There we go. What the, this is what Tuesday. Harborfreight.com. I don't know how many of these are falling apart on me. Now on to you. Not the world's best tigger, especially when it's. I'm used to welding massive parts. Luckily, this is a test piece that I've been practicing on. 
The real money shot is this. These little dogs have been rounded over on the ends. I don't know if you can tell. Come on, focus up there, camera. And this doesn't fit in there very well anymore. It can slip out because it's round. It's not sharp edges. So, I can either make this whole piece again, which will take me some time, or I'm going to try to TIG up a little material on the edge of these dogs, similar to what I've done here. I've been practicing. Trying to figure out what kind of amperage to use and and frankly I think I'm going to try a little pulse on it. Now I've cleaned this with a brake cleaner so that it's as clean as I can get it. Now remember if you're welding and you clean something with brake cleaner get the non-chlorinated kind. You want to make gas that will kill you. What is it, phosgene gas? Anyway. I think I'm going to be brave enough to try it. Got to change out the electrode. I contaminated it on the last one. Grind that off. Well, this was fun. I uh, got a little Dremel tool out and a die grinder and I ran over all this and cleaned it up. It was pitiful looking when I started. But I can already tell a difference when this goes in. You can't. It won't come out till almost the very end going this way. Well, I feel a little bit better. Just took this off the surface plate. Now I got to clean up the, the edges. But uh, I think that's going to be nice and serviceable. Let me clean it up and I'll bring you back.
I think that'll work fine. It locks up good and tight. Hard as hell on those little teeth. That A2 is pretty good. We got a winner. Finally. Hope you're happy, Don. Now we can put the, the machine back together. I couldn't put it back together because I needed this to make sure that fit right in there. Because that's what the handle turns uh, the down feed for. So. I'm happy with that. Say goodnight, Gracie.